Okay, this video is for you. This is part two of projectile motion. In the previous video, I showed you how to model projectile motion in vPython. And today I'm going to do the same thing, but with air resistance. It's going to be way more awesome. So here's a video. I made this video and I took these two balls, okay? And I have this fairly large mass rubber ball and a very, very low mass foam ball, but I tossed them with the same hands. So they had the same initial velocity. And so let's look at that black ball. Uh, it's a lot heavier following this path. The key here is that it only has the downward gravitational force pulling on it. And so when an object only has a downward gravitational force on it, we call that projectile motion. And we have this parabolic path. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you a quick review of how we modeled this motion from the previous video, which I will link down below. So here's my ball in the air, has a downward gravitational force. I have the momentum principle, which says that the total force on an object is equal to the change momentum divided by the change in time. If I break this into a very small time step, I can calculate the momentum at some, I can know the momentum at some point, P1, and I can use this to break up the momentum principle and find the momentum P2 at some later time, a short time interval. And we call this the momentum update formula. And I did this in the video before below, and I'm skipping over a lot of the steps so you can go watch that video because I want to do some more cool stuff. And so here's how it works. And I just realized I messed up the slide again, but that's fine. Uh, let me just go through all three of them. So number one, calculate the net force, which is simple and never really change, right? I'm breaking this motion into small time steps. Number two, update the momentum. This is a total legitimate step right here because the net force is constant. It's always true. Number three, update the position. This is not legit. This is where I cheated. Okay, because this comes from the definition of the average velocity. Uh, so P2 is not the average velocity. P2 over M is not the average velocity. But if my time interval is small, this mostly works. Okay, and it did work. I showed you that video. We did it already. And then I update time, and then I repeat these processes until I want to stop, okay, or however long you want. This is the idea of a numerical calculation. And we did that for projectile motion. Now... Let's go back over here and look at the other ball. You'll notice it does not have the same path as the black ball, even though they started with the same initial velocity. This ball has a downward gravitational force pulling at it also. But there's a another force, the backwards pushing air resistance force. And clearly, I have to take that force into account to model the motion of this. And that's what we're doing in this video. Now, you may say, but wait. Both balls are in the air. Doesn't the other ball have an air drag force on it too? Yes, it does. But, and this is even a bad picture, that's the gravitational force. It's actually even bigger than that. So for this black ball, there is an air drag force on it, but it's tiny compared to the gravitational force. So if I ignore it, it works out okay. And that's what I did. Okay, so how do we model this air drag force? I messed up this next slide, but I'm not going to, I'm going to let it go. Uh, so, we can build a model for the air drag force that depends on the velocity of the object, how fast it's moving. And you can test this out. Put your hand out of a moving car window, and you can feel the faster you go. You can feel that air pushing against your hand. The faster you go, the more that air pushes. It depends on the cross-sectional area of the object. If you have your hand in a, in a fist versus an open hand, you're going to feel a different force. It depends on the density of the air. Uh, if you change it to water, you can still do the same kind of thing with water. Much higher drag forces in water. And it depends on the shape of the object. So we can model this. Here's my, my ball. And it's moving with some velocity V. And there's a backwards pushing air drag force, F air. And so this is key, right? The air resistance force is in the opposite direction as the velocity. Technically, it's the relative velocity of the object with respect to the wind. Because you could take, if you have an object that's sitting still with respect to the ground, but the air is moving, then you'd still have an air drag force. We're not going to deal with wind here. And so I can calculate the vector force for the air drag as this. So here I have negative 1 half. Rho is the density. A is a cross-sectional area. C is a drag coefficient. I'll show you that in a second. And now we have a problem because... In most cases, we're going to say that the drag force depends on the square of the velocity. You can't square a vector. 
So I have to take the magnitude of that vector and square it. But then I don't have a vector. So I have to multiply it by this v hat. So I need to find v hat is a unit vector in the direction of v. I'm going to need that, okay? Because I can't tell you which direction this force is at every point. It depends on the motion of the ball. So I'm going to need to have Python do that. And this is an important point, the unit vector v hat. Okay, let's look at some parameters before we get started. Uh, so if I have air, the density of air is about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. I'm going to use that. Uh, if for the cross-sectional area, that's the, if you're looking at the object head on, what shape does it look like and what's the area? So if I have a sphere, it looks like a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. And then I have this drag coefficient. So the drag coefficient depends on the shape. Here's a picture of a diagram from Wikipedia, and I'll link it down below, showing different shapes and their approximate drag coefficient. So if I have a sphere, the drag coefficient would be 0.47. These, you can't derive these. You really have to experimentally determine them. Uh, if, if you have a half sphere, which is the same, looks like the same shape head on, it has a different drag coefficient. Okay, or a cylinder, that looks like a circle too, it has a different drag coefficient. So it doesn't, it's not just about that. Um, so that's my drag coefficient. I'm going to use 0.47. Now here's the actual ball I threw, and you can see the approximate size of it. Uh, I measured, let's just say it has a radius of 1.7, a mass of 0.8 grams, and I'm going to throw it at 44 point, I'm going to throw it at 4 meters per second. And so here's the new method that we're going to do. We're going to start with, uh, again, breaking this into small time steps. Number one, calculate the net force. This is the same as before, except now I have this new force in there. I have to calculate the gravitational force and the air drag. And this is where numerical calculations are so powerful. Because since the net force is not constant during each time step, if you wanted to do this on paper, you really can't. You have to do this numerically. That force depends on the velocity, and the velocity depends on the force. So it's really complicated. Next is update the position, update the momentum, same as before. Update the momentum. The position, now I did have a typo here. Again, that should be R2 equals R1 plus P2 over M delta T. It's the same same as before. Update time in each time step. And then I just keep doing this forever until I want to end. And we're going to do this right now. It's going to be awesome. So let's sw switch over to Python. I'm going to write the code live. It's going to be awesome. And I'll see you guys there. Okay, so I'm going to cheat. It's not cheating, really. I'm going to start with my code from before, right? I've already got a lot of this finished. I don't want to have to redo everything. So I'm going to start with the same code I used for the previous projectile motion problem, and I'm going to add in air drag. So I already have here the ground and the ball and the position and G and the mass of the ball, which I need to change. I had that as uh, 2. So it's a 0 0.8. I said 0 0.8 grams, E to the negative 3. That's the mass. I'm going to change this velocity down to 4. Uh, this changes to 45. Um, then everything else is good, right? Okay, so let's just run this. It's always a good idea to run things before you start really messing stuff up. Um, I'm going to change this to... Let's change this time step. This is one... There he goes. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um... Let's make the velocity a little bit faster because I forgot I put it in a weird spot. But Oh, and I started it off the ground too, so that's fine. I don't really care. Uh, there's my ball. That's what we have before. Okay, so now I just need to add in a couple extra things. I need the density of air, rho equals 1.2. I need the area, so I'm going to say, um, let's, I had the radius of the ball as, I could use the radius of the ball I'm going to make up a different one because that's the visual radius of the ball. And I want to use the actual radius of the ball. 1 R equals, so I'm going to make it capital R. And that's 1.7 times 10. This so is 0.017 meters. And then I need C of 0.47. Okay, so now I'm down here. And the first thing I'm going to do in my loop is to calculate the velocity. Okay, and I don't actually need to do that. But if I'm updating the momentum and I use velocity to find the uh, air drag, I do need to update that. And I've made this mistake so many times you would not believe. So I'm going to say ball.v equals ball 
.p divided by ball .m. And that may seem silly, right? Because I use the, vo the velocity to find this. But if I don't do that, then it's going to make me make a mistake. So now down here in the f net thing, all I need to do is add negative 0 0.5 times rho times a times, oh, I didn't calculate a. a equals pi times r squared a times c times, now I want to do the magnitude of v squared. So I can say magnitude v, no, ball dot v squared. And then I need to multiply that by, and I always get scared doing this. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a parentheses around this. And I know you don't need to. I just get scared, right? Because I don't want it to raise it to the power of a unit vector. It'd have an error anyway. And then I need to multiply by the unit vector v. So it's going to be norm ball dot v. So that's my r hat, v hat. I'm sorry, v hat. This line, what do I need to change in this line? Nothing. Right? Because I've already calculated the net force. What do I need to change in this line? Nothing. Because that didn't I didn't change anything. Now let's look at this though. Before I run it, this over here is the final position. It had it went 4.49 meters and it took 1.06 seconds. So it should give me a different value when I run it. So all I did was add those things in there. Now let's run it and see what happens. Check that out. It didn't go as far and didn't take as long. And you'll notice that does not look like a parabola, right? Is that not cool? Wait, we're going to do something cooler. Okay, since I've already started with this program, I'm actually going to add a second ball. So let's say down here, I'll write it down here. Uh, ball 2 equals ball 2 equals sphere. Position equals ball dot POS. Radius equals ball dot ra I'm just making it the same as the other ball um, <clears throat> what color shall I make it let's make it let's just leave it as uh, as a gray white I'm not sure what that made let's do make a trail though make trail equals true okay and now I need the mass uh, ball 2 dot m equals uh, let's just get to that 0 0.2 200 kilograms I'm gonna put no air drag even though we could add that in there actually let's do that first uh, let's let me cancel this just to show you what happens. If I increase the mass of this to, I'm going to cancel that, comment that out. And I can say ball.m equals 0 0.2. So it's a lot heavier, 200 kilograms, 200 grams. So you see, I get back to about the same value I had without air drag. So in this case, the air drag was indeed negligible. And that's cool. Okay, so now let's put it back the way we had it. I can just delete that, I don't really care. Um, down here, undelete this, uncomment out that. Now I need to get the ball 2.p equals um, ball 2.m times v0. Let's put this same exact initial velocity. Oops, yeah, I got that. Uh, okay, I got it. Now I need to go down here and I'm going to count, I'm going to model both of these at the same time. So I'm going to say F net two equals ball two dot M times G. And then down here, I'm going to say ball two dot P equals ball two dot P plus F net two dot times DT. And then I need to update the position ball two dot POS equals ball two dot POS plus ball two dot P times DT divided by ball two dot M. I, I feel like I'm going to make a mistake, but I'm going to run it anyway. Let's just see what happens. What do you think? Yeah, check that out. I, you know, I just won. I really did. Okay? I really did win. Um, let's do one more thing. Okay? And then I'll make another video uh, with this. I'm going to put this back down at the at the origin. So the ball starts at uh, at at the ground. Oh, I, no, I started at point one. I'm sorry. Point one is the ground. Okay, launch at a 45 degree angle. You see that? 
And, and this one stopped because I, I stopped it on this one. That's fine. But the position is 1.98. Notice that position. And this is at a 45 degree angle. So now if I wanted to go farther, if I, if I launch it at a greater or smaller angle, will it go farther? And that's the question, right? And I'm going to let you play around with this, but let's just try that. I can change this to uh, 40 degrees. Let's do 35, 35 degrees. And does it go farther or shorter than this distance? Or the same? And, oh, I can't remember. It's, it's a little bit different, okay? And the key thing that I'm trying to get here is that the maximum range is not at 45 degrees. I'm going to make a video that really explores the range of this projectile, but we're going to make a function. We're going to make grass, but I want to get you used to the idea of air drag, okay? So I'm going to stop there. There's a lot of homework for you to play with. I'm going to include down below the video from the last case with projectile motion with no air drag. I'm gonna include the code for this so you can play around with it and you should. You're not gonna figure this out without playing around with this. And then I'm gonna see you in the next video and we're gonna do some really awesome stuff. I'll talk to you guys later.